Back in March of 2022, I posted a video about how I converted an older Apple Thunderbolt display to work with a modern Mac, my M1 MacBook Pro that I had just gotten at the time. The neat thing about the Thunderbolt display is that it had this umbilical cable that carried power in the form of a MagSafe connector, and it carried a video signal over Thunderbolt 2, which used a mini DisplayPort connector. Confusing, I know. The modern Macs, of course, didn't have those connectors. Instead, they went all USB-C, and even the MagSafe connector on newer Macs is, in fact, itself USB-C power delivery. So my modification involved a couple of additions inside the display, a power converter that provided USB-C power delivery, and I actually stuffed the Apple Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter inside the display, and then ran a pair of USB-C cables out of the back of the display and they plugged into the USB-C ports on my new Mac. Everything worked great, and if you were interested in that video, go ahead and watch it first. I'll post a card here. The comments I received were overwhelmingly positive. I was really delighted to see how many people were interested in the modification and how many people actually went and did it themselves. Still, I got a lot of comments saying, oh, cool, but I wish this was just one USB-C cable. And that's fair. We're used to seeing data and power go over the same USB-C cable in all sorts of devices these days. I knew it was technically possible to run Thunderbolt and power on the same USB-C cable because there were hubs out there that did that, but most of those hubs had lots more ports than I needed and just were bulky and expensive and I didn't want to deal with them. Until I came across this. It's an Anchor Thunderbolt 4 hub with a really minimalistic design. You can see it has a single USB-C port for carrying Thunderbolt 4 and power delivery to the computer. It spits out a high-speed USB-A port and provides three more Thunderbolt ports. It's really small and compact, offering lots of mounting locations. A little bit less compact is the power supply it comes with, but that's because it's 20 volts, five amps for 100 watts potential power delivery to the computer it's plugged into. So this video is gonna be about finding out whether I can use this Thunderbolt 4 hub with my existing dual Thunderbolt display setup on my M1 MacBook Pro and see if I can get down to just one USB-C cable that carries a decent amount of power, dual monitors, ethernet, audio, speaker, USB, all that stuff reliably over a single USB-C cable. So let's try it out. When I'm seated, this is the left side display and it's the one I put the conversions inside of. And that's the first device in the daisy chain. That's internally connected to the, all the original Thunderbolt 2 bus ports that are on the back of this display. So I have a Thunderbolt 2 cable plugged into here. It runs up to the arm, across, and over to the right side display. And that is the second device on the daisy chain. In fact, I have that cable going all the way into the board on that display rather than using the original umbilical. Then it outputs another Thunderbolt 2, Thunderbolt 2 cable that comes up. You guessed it, back to the dual display arm, back down, and it spits out here. Now I used to have this plugged into a hub underneath the desk, which in turn supported some USB 3 ports. Lately, I've just been using it with this little dual disc uh, mirrored RAID volume right here on the desk. So that's how I have three devices total in a daisy chain, all connected to the Mac with power coming from one of those displays. The way I think that this will work, so I'll take the hub here and plug in this Thunderbolt 4 connection into one of these downstream ports. Plug in another Thunderbolt 4 cable, and this is actually a Thunderbolt 4 cable. It's a good one from CalDigit. You want to look for the symbols on the cable to know what you're working with and what kind of um, capabilities they have. So this has full Thunderbolt 4 data certification and it can carry lots more power than I need. So I'll plug that into the upstream port, and then that will connect to the MacBook. Power is injected with this big old power supply into the hub. And this cable is free to power whatever USB-C thing I want. So let's hook this up for real and see if it actually works. So I've got things rigged up here on the desktop for a test. And you can see already the hub has a green light on, but no blue light. The left side light should indicate when we have a Thunderbolt connection. So let's make that final connection from the hub to the MacBook. And do we get a blue light? We do get a blue light there. Oh, and the Lassie 
mirror drive came on as well. So that's good news. And let's pop open the laptop cover. There we go, three screens. Do we have a hard drive connected? That's the next question. Doesn't look like yet, unless it's on one of the other screens. Let's give it a second. Maybe it's still initializing. There it is. So there's the RAID drive connected as well. Next thing to check is charging. So let's look at the system profiler. And in this section, we should have, there we go, AC charge information. Connected, yes. Charging, yes. And wattage, 85 watts. That's what I was hoping for. It's a final test. We can also plug in my little USB 3 hub over here. It's got a USB drive plugged into it. Plug that in. It's flipped on. Do we get another drive? Go, go, gadget, USB thumb drive. Not just yet. Okay, so what if a power cycle? I think I see the problem. I need to be more careful with my cables. And there you go. USB transfer is present. So we're working on one, two, three daisy chain Thunderbolt devices, plus the built-in high-speed USB 3 hub that's inside here, connected over to yet another high-speed hub, and everything's all functioning together. That's awesome. Now, how do I connect all this stuff in such a way that I preserve my nice clean desktop without stuff all over it, which was the whole point of the original conversion? Let's look into that next. Say hi to Duck the dog, he's my helper for today. I've looked at this and there's a couple different ways I can set things up. The most complicated and one I'm tempted to do is to break this thing open, pull the board out, and see if I can stuff it inside the display. But this one already has the conversions inside from the last video and I think it's a little bit crowded in there. Probably the fastest way to get up and running at least is to mount this externally. So I could put it underneath the desk like I have uh, my older hub the trouble with running the Thunderbolt 4 cable down under the desk is that that's a long run from the display across the arm through the joints and down to wherever I can mount the hub. And the trouble with Thunderbolt 4 is that it really doesn't like long runs. You want to keep the cable length pretty short. I think to go long, you have to get maybe an active cable. It might work just fine. I'm not sure. It's just there's some risk there of additional complication. Whereas if I just take this hub and mount it on the back of the arm, it kind of fits nicely there and I could even go to a shorter cable from the hub right around and into the display. Then this extra Thunderbolt 4 cable would hang down from the hub now and it would join the power cable which would continue to hang down. So my footprint on the desk would be exactly the same with a Thunderbolt 4 cable that also has power on it and then a spare USB-C cable with power delivery to use to charge whatever I want, such as my phone. I pulled off the cable raceways and started mocking up where wires could run, starting with the power cable for the new hub and also a USB cable from my desktop mounted USB 3 hub up to the new Thunderbolt hub. Initially I had it mounted on the back of the display arm, but I found through cycling that it would hit in certain angles. So I redirected and put that in front of the arm instead and that worked better. Once all the cables were routed and plugged in, I cycled everything around to make sure they never got pulled tight. Then switched attention to the bottom of the desk where I removed my old Thunderbolt 2 hub. In its place, I put the power supply for the new Thunderbolt hub and ran all the wires and zip tied things up so they were nice and tidy. So here's the setup underneath the desk where I've got power and uh, ethernet to the wall. I need this whole thing to be able to move up and down together as such. And so I like to have all the cables basically all bound together and minimize the number of cables that actually need to move when the desk moves, obviously. I'm so thrilled with this setup so far. I've got Thunderbolt 4 with 85 watts power delivery for the laptop on a single connection. I still have the old USB-C with power delivery up to 45 watts that I can use to charge other devices. So in this case, I literally have an Apple Thunderbolt display with MagSafe charging a Samsung tablet. I just think that's cool. Plus when I plug in my downstream devices like this RAID volume powers up as well. Open the lid. 
everything there lights up. Something else that I found recently, this is kind of cool. This is a USB-C power delivery to DC barrel plug. You can get these in all different sizes and configurations, straight, right angle, male, female. This one is the one that matches my RAID volume here. And this was made with a 12 volt, 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter DC barrel plug. I'm gonna unplug that and set it aside. And now I'm gonna use like I said, I still have 45 watts of USB-C power here. Plug this in. This little adapter does the USB-C power delivery negotiation for the right voltage. Let's plug it in. Drive power's on. Give it a second to initialize. And there you go. You can see it on my desktop. Or maybe you can't, but you have to trust me, it's there. I'm just loving it. Just a nice, clean desktop, minimal cables, Lots of space, minimal clutter, and that's how I like to work. Now, the caveats. There are a couple compromises or things that aren't working quite perfectly yet, and I still haven't figured out exactly what's going on, but at least two things are going on. One is this USB hub, or maybe it's the anchor hub, doesn't like the hot swapping that I just showed you. That is, if you have a drive connected, you eject it, you unplug the single connection, replug it, that USB 3 connection doesn't seem to reestablish itself. I can even cycle power on this thumb drive and that doesn't do it. It seems like when you disconnect and reconnect the anchor hub and in turn this USB hub, you lose that USB connection. And the only way I've found so far, I haven't looked at it very long, but is you have to unplug the USB connection here, plug it back in, and now you'll have that bus online. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that. The second thing, which is more annoying, but I think I can live with it, is that sometimes if the laptop has gone into a deep sleep, you open the lid and of course its screen comes on and the left side screen comes on. The right side screen, which is the number two device in the daisy chain, takes its time to wake up. It can be five seconds or I've seen it take as long as a minute to turn on and that's what's really confusing me. I don't know why there would be so much variability. I was really, really disappointed when I first saw that. I thought, well, this solution doesn't work after all. But after trying it out for a while, I'm now convinced that it always will come alive. It just doesn't wake up immediately. And I, I hold out some hope that maybe I can figure out why it's not coming on immediately. But it always, in the end, lights up and works properly. Third caveat, once you have a single connection to your laptop, it's really tempting to just unplug that and go. You don't even think about it because it's such an easy disconnection. But in this case, I do have drives that are connected. So it's now I have to have a mental reminder to eject anything that might be on that Thunderbolt or USB bus before I go and yank out the connection. So for one final convenience, I'm adding this switch into the DC power for this hard drive. And what that will let me do is decide when I want it to actually connect and that way I can come and go with the laptop, unplug, replug, and I've got the uh, ability to keep the power off here. Kind of awkward with that right angle plug, but this is kind of just the first try. In any case, I can just flip this off, and that way when I plug in the, uh, you know, the Thunderbolt single connection, I can keep it from automatically spooling up. And of course, I've got power switches on the USB hub over here as well. So at this point, the drive would be spooling up. I didn't want it to because power is off, but if I flip on power, now it's as if you just plugged in Thunderbolt or just plugged in power and the uh, drive turns on and it will initialize. Of course, the caveat I gave earlier still applies. You still have to eject this drive when you want to disconnect, but at least I can keep it from connecting when I don't actually need it very often. This is kind of a backup volume for old videos I make and things I don't really need to keep on here, but I don't necessarily want to lose it was uh, free out of e-way, so that makes it really attractive. And that's one of the coolest things actually about this conversion and why I like doing this sort of stuff is that I can reuse older technology and update it to be just as functional for me as a brand new replacement. I don't feel like I have to make many compromises except for maybe figuring out how to make things work. This was in the e-waste. This USB uh, 3.0 hub was in the e-waste. I repaired both of these monitors uh, one was in the e-waste and one I just got parts on eBay to make it come alive. The, uh, the Belkin hub here was an eBay item. There's probably other things that I'm forgetting here. 
that were either free or used or refurbished. And I kind of enjoy keeping those things out of the landfill and putting them back to work. So that's another advantage of this conversion for me. Your mileage may vary. Lots of people are happy just to have dongles on their desktop or they don't take their laptop anywhere and none of this applies. But hopefully if you're watching this far, it's because you have sort of the same taste or priority that I did, which is to have this minimalistic desktop that mimics the, the way that the Thunderbolt displays were originally designed to work in terms of connecting up to your, your local laptop or desktop. Well, I think I'll end things here. Like I said, in the previous video where I converted the Thunderbolt display, I got lots of comments asking, how can we get down to a single Thunderbolt connection? And I'm glad I was able to show in this video that it is indeed possible. I hope for anyone that was planning on doing this conversion or already did it and wants to get down to a single cable, that this was helpful, uh, seeing the devices needed, the connections needed, and some of the configuration and considerations you need to make uh, in order to make this work for you. If it was helpful, or even if you just found it entertaining, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave any questions down in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And thank you for watching.